Welcome back to my channel. First of all, I'd like to say hi. I hope you're having a great day. I, um, I know I am because, uh, hi. If you've checked the date, it is May 27th, 2020, and I just gotta say one thing. I know nobody probably is gonna, is gonna care, but like, it's my birthday! Yes! I'm turning 20 today. For those who've been asking, I am turning 20 today. Yes! I don't look 20, I know I look like I'm, you know, just a bad bitch, you know, going on 18 or whatever, <laughs> two years down, but I'm 20 today, and I just figured I'd want to put out something that's very, means a lot to me, is very special to me, so today I will be talking about the story of The Amazing Screw Up. Yep, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a ride, so if you're not in the mood for anything depressing right now, or anything upsetting, or anything like that, Stop watching the video. Go get some popcorn. Go like watch a movie. Go treat yourself, King. It, go treat yourself. I just want to put a warning here that this video is gonna have uh, talk about some cases such as suicide or self harm and all that stuff. So if you are easily triggered to that, I strongly and highly recommend you click off this video. Go watch a movie. Go treat yourself to some ice cream, and then I'll see you next Wednesday. But uh, this is the story of the amazing script. Hi, I'm Amazing Scrub. Today is the story on how I'm gonna give you the name as it's not necessarily a huge backstory in my entire life. This isn't a draw my life. Uh, however, um, to kind of give you a backstory of what it was. High school, my first four years, or all four years of my high school career were difficult. Uh, they were very hard to get through, especially my freshman year. It weighed on me the most. Um, uh, some people may agree or may even like relate to that some, as the freshman year being the scariest because you're still learning about yourself and you're still going through some things and you're still experiencing everything. Um, I was a very quiet girl. I was the girl that was in band and focused on myself. Not many people knew me. I was very shy. I was going through a lot mentally. Uh, I was going through things such as depression and anxiety. I was struggling with school a lot and uh, Having friends was very difficult because people would start drama. I wasn't for it. Um, my mom would kind of raised me just being like, don't be a part of it. Don't associate yourself with it. Step away, walk away, and that's what I try my best to do. The story of the amazing screw up goes like this. I was bullied uh, all four years, exact to be exact, um, or all three years. For all three years, or first three years of my high school career, I was bullied excessively. I went to a really bad school uh, in a really bad neighborhood, very bad area. It took me 45 minutes to get there. It was just really rough. Uh, there was gangs, there was fights constantly, there was drugs being used in the bathroom. People were always constantly like, let me pierce your belly button, uh, things like that. It was very bad. Uh, we were on the news quite a lot. And I went to a really bad school and I was very quiet. I kept to myself in a lot of my classrooms, but that doesn't. That only gets you so far, because people somehow find a way to bug you. So uh, I was in my seventh period class uh, for reading or language arts, and Miss Rosa was just making every making sure everybody was doing the project that we were working on the current time, and I got assigned with a really bad person, really bad person, and I remember. I had gotten this kid in trouble because he was watching porn in the back of the classroom on one of the school computers. He hacked the computer so he could watch porn. He got in trouble, he got suspended because of me. And he hated me, absolutely hated me. I was gonna room, go with a friend of mine at that time, but she ended up choosing our groups. It was really bad, really awful situation. Um, she partnered me up with this guy and he said, I should do all of it. He's not laying a single hand on this and I didn't want to lose my grade. I told my teacher that he didn't do anything. She didn't care. She got fired. So if that gives you any aspect to this entire story, she was fired uh, at the end of the year because of her awful teaching skills and how bad she was with the kids. Um, and the other girl didn't want to do anything either. So I remember I worked really hard on this project, put everything together top to bottom. I was very proud of my work and the second I presented it, I presented it by myself. They didn't know anything. They were standing next to me and uh, they didn't know anything. He kept reading off the slides and I guess I had a couple grammar issues. So he looked back at me and obviously hated my guts. Um, the grade came in and we got a D. It was pretty depressing. I was pretty upset. It was such an easy presentation. How did you screw it up? What an amazing screw up. And that's where the name came from. But that story doesn't stop there. So, 
because of what I was going through, a lot of times I didn't have much people to talk to where I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody. I didn't want to bother anybody, I just felt like putting it on other people was selfish of me, especially because everyone seemed to be perfectly fine. Of course, you could always act like you're perfectly fine, but you never really know. So, I took everything in, was dealing it all on my own, and I thought of the idea to create an Instagram where I could just vent. No one had to follow it. It, it was just an account for me where I'd post things that about my day, and I'd post depressing stuff, of course, uh, which looking back at now, it's like, wow, why would you do that? Like, you attention seeker. I wasn't doing it for attention. I didn't care. I just needed a way to vent because writing it down no longer helped drawing pictures no longer helped painting no longer helped writing things on my skin no longer helped nothing helped so i was like what if someone will see this and talk to me and help me it kind of worked for a little bit i started posting about my day and saying like uh things like for example one time uh, like i had a bully pull some gummy worms my dad and i didn't have the best uh relationships back when I was in high school, regardless, my dad got me gummy bears or gummy worms from the 7-Eleven down the street to be very nice to me and gave it to me. And it was kind of cherished it for a bit. I was like, my dad thought about me today and he got me these. Like this, this was great. The, today was not going to be ruined. Today was my day. Um, little did I know I put it in my bag. I was going to save it for lunch. A couple of class periods before lunch, some seniors pulled it out of my bag and wanted to eat it. They opened it. Uh, and they started eating it, I was trying to get it back. I was trying to like, of course, like give it back to me, give it back to me. They threw it over the school fence and all the gummy bears were all over the floor. So there was no point anymore. I was upset and I vented about it. People were starting to see that some of the good things in life, in my life were starting to go bad. And it just, I started venting. And people started seeing that and reaching out to me because no one knew who I was. It was a completely anonymous account. No one knew who I was. So these random people on the internet would comment things like, you're so strong, like you're doing great. And that stuff would actually uplift my day. It would really. At some point, I realized what I genuinely like to do. I love making other people happy. This is why I create content. I don't create it for myself. I love editing. Don't get me wrong. I love making videos. Don't get me wrong. But I love entertaining people, making people happy, making people smile. It's genuinely something I love to do. So, I realized that and I made it something. The name of the Instagram was called Amazing Screw Up. I like to consider us like a magicians or something, or something magical, like something, make it positive. The amazing screw ups, we're just the amazing screw ups. We screw things up that are impossible, but the thing is you make those mistakes. You make those mistakes and it's okay because everyone makes those mistakes. Even the things that you didn't think you could possibly screw up, you screw up, but guess what? Now you know there's a way to fix that. There's a way to counteract that. You know, just like how I've been saying to everybody, Albert Einstein or all these big time uh, inventors and creative people, they didn't just one day be fucking fantastic. No, they made mistakes. And of course, even the easiest mistakes, but they learned to create, correct it. They learn to make it better. So that's what makes an amazing screw up so amazing because we find the loopholes and what things, how to screw things up. And guess what? Now we know that there's a loophole to screw those things up and we make it better. We can either be amazing one minute and screw up the next, but that's okay. People make mistakes. We're human. That's just how we are. And that's okay. I realized that one day during my freshman year of high school. It was like an epiphany. I had a really good day and it came to me. I was like, I'm an amazing screw up and that's okay. I may have gotten a D on that project, but that's okay. Because the next one I'll do better. And now I know the corrections I need to make. So I'm gonna keep doing them and I'm gonna make them better. I'm gonna make myself better. People started to see the positivity on that account. When people were coming and seeing someone so relatable from going from depressed, someone, people kept coming in depressed and sad and seeing these posts and feeling the emotions and relating and I flipped it. I was no longer, I was depressed, of course. I had my days where of course I just needed to cry and let it out. But then I started making something positive out of it. I made my DMs open. People could message me. I literally put in my, my bio, if you have a rough day, text me. I had over 180 DMs from people. It was a 
there was a really popular account. I had people from all different types of places come to me, vent to me, tell me about their day, and I would just cheer them up with the best as I could. I would send memes, make them smile. I would even call some of these people. I would call them to be like, you know what? I think you're doing great today. Just, I started helping people. I started saving lives. I could confidently say I saved some lives. I, have, I now to this day still even receive messages from these people that were on this previous account that I saved their life. One of my greatest success stories was named Hassan. I talked to him for a full eight to nine months. He was really depressed. He had a lot of issues, but that's okay. He would go, he was, he got registered or put into a mental hospital a couple of times. And he told me how his parents didn't love him and he just felt so alone. I would talk to him every single day. I would even call him up on the phone. We had chats going back and forth, back and forth. One day he said, I know I'm, gonna, I'm with the day I'm gonna take it, take my life. I know with the day I'm going to do it. May 15th. I had grown attached to him as a friend because that's how I usually am. I'm just, my heart is so big. I just wanna love everybody. So hearing that was very heartbreaking. I said, give me a couple weeks to convince you wrong. Give me a couple weeks to make you feel better about yourself. It worked for a little while. He started telling me his days were getting better and he started to smile more. And unfortunately things come to an end um, and people can sometimes take your kindness as, you know, love or romance and he thought I was in love with him. And I, I hurt. I honestly hurt when people tell me they have feelings for me and I reject because I don't wanna hurt people at all. It even hurts me to think about hurting somebody else. Trying not to get emotional. Ah. <laughs> it hurts me to hurt other people. I don't like hurting other people at all. So May 15th roll around, he said he's gonna do it. Because I became his friend, I knew so much about him, where he was from, where he lived. So I instantly picked up the phone, called 911. I was terrified on my fucking mind. I called 911. I said, please make me anonymous. I don't want to be known, but there's a kid. Here's his address. Here's this, this, and that. Please find him. He's going to kill himself. I got calls from the police. I, that entire day, I was in my room. It was a Sunday, Sunday afternoon into night, morning into night. I was just laying in my bed. I kept calling the police. My parents kept coming in and out just to check on me. And I was like, don't worry about it. I'm just like, you know, watching YouTube videos on my phone, like trying to push it off because I wanted to be completely anonymous. I just wanted to make sure my friend was okay. And I, I was just panicked, just very panicked because I didn't want the police to come find me too because I was depressed. And I had said some things like uh, that I was gonna hurt myself too. Around the time I was, but I had gotten better, so I no longer do that. I don't hurt myself anymore. Regardless, I was afraid the police were gonna come back to me and talk to me, and I don't want that to happen. Didn't want that to happen at that time. So. Night rolled along, and I gave my last call to them keeping them updated with what's going on. He stopped replying to me. I put the phone down and that was it. That night, the police tracked my phone. They showed up at my neighbor's house. My dad walked out and he said, hey, are you looking for somebody? Cause uh, there's the, the, the owners that live there, they're on vacation, what's up? The police officer says, oh yeah, I'm looking for Victoria. And obviously he mentioned my last name, but I'm not gonna mention that on here. He said, I'm looking for Victoria. Do you know who that is? My dad panicked. So did my mom. Everybody, all my family were outside and I was inside in my room still panicking. So they were all outside just kind of like talking, had a table out, playing card games. And the cop just shows up. I was scared out of my mind and I didn't know what to do because my sister ran in saying, Victoria, the cops are here for you. I was scared. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I thought I was. I thought that was it. I thought I was either going to prison or I was getting sent to a mental institution myself. 
So I walked outside and my parents were like almost crying and my mom runs up to me and gives me a hug. I was so confused. I was like, what is the cop telling them? My dad says, you're a hero. You're like, you're, the cop is telling us that you're, you called in someone that was about to kill themselves and you basically almost saved their life. I was in shock. The cop obviously came over to me and asked if I could talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. And I did. I walked up to him and I talked to him one-on-one. -on -one. He said, just so you know, he ran away. Hassan, the kid, ran away. And, um... I'm sorry. Give me a second. I'm sorry. They said that Hassan had run away. Um, his family didn't even care. And they wanted to make sure that I was okay. I said I was fine. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I am perfectly fine. Um, I just want to make sure he's safe. My parents thought I was a hero after that. <laughs> Just saying that, like, I've saved, I've saved his life. And I've had this happen a couple of times, but this one was just, I had so much time invested in him. I've had to call the police multiple times on multiple people from multiple states. Even one time in London, and that was, that was awful. <laughs> that was really hard, especially because when you call 911 here, you have to, it, you have to go through so much to even contact people out of the country. Regardless. Three months after that, I had a private detective come to me while I was in school. My friends thought I was in trouble because, uh, of course, when a cop and a detective walk in and they come to talk to you, you're terrified. You don't know what's gonna happen. And especially, this was three months. I completely was trying to erase it from my brain that this even happened. And there the cops are coming to me and saying that they needed to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. They brought me into a big room with an oval, a huge long table, like an office or like a meeting room. And it was just me and the detective and the cop locking the door. He was asking me questions such as, do you have any whereabouts or know any whereabouts of this kid? We've been looking for him in the past three months and we still haven't found him. I contacted him, contacted Hassan. It's been a couple months, I wanted to check up on him and he was responding. He took a picture of his home across the street and said, I've been living across the street for the past little bit here. I was, I promised the detective and I was by law, I had to tell the detective what was going on. I told the detective he's been living across the street and they tried to go to the location and he was gone. He ran away again. Years, years went on. Just a couple of months ago, eight, nine, ten months ago, almost a year ago. I get a text from a number I didn't recognize. It was a son. He said that after that day, he started train hopping. He was hopping onto trains, running away from home, and he was trying to find and start a new life. He ran into a woman um, as they were hopping these trains and they fell in love. They expect to, uh, they expect to settle down somewhere in Canada have a kid. I'm trying not to get emotional because it was like just something that was very great to hear that I genuinely did save his life and especially because I thought he was gone. We fuck up and that's okay. We make mistakes but that's what makes us so fucking amazing because we can own up to these mistakes. We make them because we're human. And that's why I think that the Amazing Screw Up story is just so unique. And it's just so beyond just being fuck ups and just being lame people and just that. We're the Amazing Screw Ups. Our goal here, and yes you, if you're subscribed and if you're following, yes you, your goal today is to make somebody smile. At least once. Bring a joke up to somebody. Send a meme to somebody. Make somebody smile once. Because as says Amazing Screw Ups, we make mistakes, but we correct them. We fix them. We're amazing. That's what makes us just so unique and so fucking spectacular. Make someone smile today. A hundred percent. Because I know today you guys have all made me smile. So thank you guys so much for supporting and being here. 
I know this was very long. I also know it was pretty sappy and pretty sad and had its ups and downs. But at the end of the day, I don't regret a single thing. I don't. For those who may be wondering, what happened to the account? A uh, couple, but going into my sophomore year, because this account had been up for a pretty long time, because I started, made it my first semester, and I ended it around the summer, going into sophomore year. Some people found the account that were bullying me and harassing me, and started harassing me and, and sending me death threats because of course people will send you death threats because they see you happy or they see that you're succeeding or they'll see that maybe they are just bad people and they just want to have an excuse for it. If someone ever gives you a death threat, first of all, report it. Second of all, they aren't a good person to be telling someone to kill themselves. So don't listen to them. They're obviously a bad person to listen to. They, they may be your friend, they may be your neighbor, they may be someone that you see randomly on the bus. Do not care. They are bad people. If they threaten or tell someone to kill themselves, they don't understand how beautiful life is, and they're going through something. They're not a good person, so don't listen to them. Don't. Because I love you being here. I appreciate you for being here. 100%. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching it if you've even made it this far. But after that, I was getting death threats. People were telling me, take the account down, that I'm a dirty little whore, which I was, I'm a virgin. <laughs> I'm not a whore. I've never even dated, like, two people at the same time. I've never even talked to two people at the same time. So they, they're using words against me that didn't even make sense. They don't even know the proper definition. They just wanted to attack me. They just want to pick and prod her at me, make me feel sad, make me feel negative, make me feel worse. They're using the wrong words. If they wanted to insult me, they could have been like, wow, you dumb, depressed bitch. And that would have been a better insult than calling me a whore. See, that's the thing. If someone's calling you mean names, don't listen to them. Cause I love you. Hey, love you, bitch. Thanks for watching this far. But I took the account down because out of the spur of the moment, people were starting to send this account out and people were starting to be like, hey, I know you, I went, I go to school to you, with you. Why did you tell everybody I did this to you? Why? Now people are gonna think I'm a bad person. What's wrong with you? Don't be a bad person so I don't write about you in general. Out of the spur of the moment, because the account was going out, even the people that I no longer associated with, the drama finally ended with them. People were seeing this account and they were restarting the drama. Regardless, the account, I terminated it. But, the name still stands as, Hi, I'm Amazing Scrub, and welcome to my channel. You can't kill the Amazing Scrub. You can't diminish or kill the flame of the Amazing Scrub. You can't. And that's why I'm still here. And that's why I'm still standing. If you ever, ever, first of all, ever feel like hurting yourself or taking your life, first of all, come talk to me. I'd love to hear about it or hear about your life, hear about your day. Try to brighten your day a little bit. My Instagram DMs, however, I may not respond to all of them. They're open. Discord, it also has a, I also have a Discord where I have a venting chat, vent. Because we're all supporting here, we're all here to love. But if you get to the point where you feel like you will genuinely hurt yourself or take your life, please tell the people around you. If they don't care, I do. And sometimes picking up the phone and calling somebody, such as police or the, the 1-800 uh, suicide hotline number, works. I've called it once or twice. I know. So reach out to somebody, find someone, talk to somebody. And therapy, therapy is for everyone. Talking about your feelings is healthy. Being open about how you feel is healthy. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that follow button. I'd love to see all our beautiful ass faces around. 
we do have other forms of social media so if you guys want to check that out that'll be on the description below also if you need the number for the suicide hotline or if you need uh, to contact somebody that'll also be in the description below It'll probably be at the very very top so I love you guys I love you I love you you watch it yes you you might be like laying in bed or sitting down or have your earbuds in and think no one can hear you I hear you and I love you so all right guys love you guys I'll see you guys later. Bye. What is this? No, 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 no. Spaz, bring that real shit. Ooh.